Thank you. Thank you very much for the um, invitation to speak today. You will see outside where I live, it is um, already getting dark. And I live in Africa, so we might have some insects and other creatures join us uh, because the door is open, it is summer. So um, I would also welcome um, some visitors from outside if they wish to come and join us. So what I'm going to do in the next 10 minutes is to take you through some guiding principles that we are developing in response to these global calls for transformation in ocean governance and a move away from business as usual. I would like to acknowledge my 20 co-authors who are here at the bottom of the slide. They start on the left with the South Africans and then they move across through Ghana, through Uruguay, Malaysia, Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, Sweden, Germany, and the United States. So we have a diverse group. And I would also like to thank our funders, in this case, the um, UK Research and Innovation GCRF grant, uh, the One Ocean Hub. And Alana has already mentioned that. So Alana and I met each other through the One Ocean Hub. And then I would also like to acknowledge the South African government through the um, National Research Foundation for this work. Next slide, please. So in uh, September 2015, the United Nations recognized the need for transformation when they published the Sustainable Development Goals. And in the preamble to the agenda, they stated that we are determined to take the bold and transformative steps which are urgently needed to shift the world onto a sustainable and resilient path, and no one will be left behind. So transformation is very much on the agenda. Next slide, please. So in response to, to this, um, as the One Ocean Hub, we crafted our mission for this very large and um, global project we crafted our mission based on this need for transformation. So our mission reads to transform our approach to ocean governance and research and work towards integrated and inclusive ocean governance. And you're gonna hear the word integrated and inclusive in every speaker tonight. And I think we all acknowledge that if we don't do that, um, we are going to go backwards. So our previous speaker encouraged us to work together going forward. And just for those folks who, like me, are biologists and don't really know what transformative governance is, um, here, this is what it is. It, if you have transformative governance, you have the capacity to respond to, to manage and to trigger regime shifts in coupled social ecological systems at multiple scales. So basically what that is saying is that you need to work miracles because humankind hasn't got this right before on land and now we want to go and achieve it in the ocean. So that's the, the challenge before us. Next slide, please. So in 2020, the two, two of the primary journals in the academic literature, science and nature published the following articles. And these were the responses of academics to what was going on um, in, national, in global policy realms. And they again said, we need transformation. And they emphasized the importance of this particular conversation and the urgency with which we actually need to do this transformation. Next slide, please. So in January, 2020, we at Nelson Mandela University invited a group of colleagues from across the world, from diverse backgrounds, to try to think together about what the principles might be that underpin transformed and transformative ocean governance. And in this group, we invited people from different geographies, from the biophysical sciences, from the social sciences, from social ecological systems work, as well as governance and law, and also ocean stakeholders and the World Ocean Council. So industry was also invited. Uh, I realized that that is an elephant on my slide and that elephants are not marine, but I, it's a beautiful picture, which basically for me is, is a, a sort of a, a piece of poetry about how we actually really are connected and how we need to work together. Next slide, please. 
So one of the objectives of this conference was to develop a set of principles which we hope can inform local, regional and global policies and strategies and legal frameworks. And we are hoping that the principles can serve as guidance for any new documents that emerge and can also serve as a baseline or a benchmark against which we can assess existing policies or documents, especially ones that are re renewed or revised every five years or so. Next slide, please. So the methodology, you know, as good scientists, we have to have a rigorous method. And so our methodology was to work with our 20 participants and we have put them through a very grueling process of, of questionnaires where we have asked them to word the principles. We have gone back and forth about how many should we have, what should they say, what, how should we word them. We have also then looked at the connections between them. Um, as has been done for looking at connections between the sustainable development goals. And, you know, one might argue that some sustainable development goals to achieve them might actually constrain the achievement of other goals. And we don't want our principles to have any margin for error um, where people can assume that, you know, to achieve a principle of gender equity that you might then have to lose on some other principle. We want our principles to be completely coherent. And in doing so, we are mapping the connections between our principles. It's proving very difficult, but we are persisting. And we are using systems approaches to do this work. So we are viewing our principles as an ecosystem or as a system. And we are using tools like causal loop diagrams, such as the one that you see on your screen. Next slide, please. So our point of departure for our principles is a founding statement. So this is something we could all agree on across all of our different origins. And we agreed that transformed governance is required to arrest current ocean use practices, which are based on economic growth models that have created equities and fueled conflict and environmental decline. Next slide, please. So our first principle is that human rights approaches are required. If you want to achieve transformed governance, you need human rights approaches and that these are essential for human well-being. Next. Also, we believe that social ecological systems approaches are required, that we can no longer think in silos. We can no longer play in our own comfort zones. We actually have to acknowledge and understand that we work in social ecological systems. Next slide, please. We also acknowledge that biological diversity is key for resilience in ocean ecosystems. Next slide, please. We also believe that we require diverse incentives to promote and enable sustainable ocean use practices. And you've heard quite a lot of that in previous talks, especially on the small scale fisheries. So the blue bonds that the Seychelles has adopted to have 30% of their marine area under protection. This is an example of what we would call, you know, an innovative incentive. And we require many more such incentives to promote sustainability. Next slide, please. We also acknowledge that we need to integrate cross-sectoral policies if we want to achieve social and ecological connectivity. So as a marine scientist, I understand biological connectivity and ecological connectivity. I much less understand cross-sectoral policy connectivity. And that is why I'm now finding myself in this transdisciplinary space where I have to learn how to speak to social scientists and to lawyers. And that's a challenge for me at a personal level, never mind asking the whole world to do this. You know, we, we have to be realistic about our limitations. Um, next slide, please. So 
we also believe that for transformation, we're going to need very dynamic, inclusive and adaptive modes of governance. We can no longer say, look, here's a policy um, for fisheries management, let's go off and do it. No, because we're going to find the next year that our fish have moved off to another area because we didn't have upwelling that year because the heat pump collapsed in the Southern Ocean. We need to be able to understand that we're working in a very dynamic system and we're gonna need dynamic responses to that. Next slide, please. The, um, the leveraging of international mechanisms to support implementation is important. So this is where the presentation by Alana and those, those kinds of discussions allow us at the bottom of the food chain, so the biologists right down here, to understand that there are these international mechanisms. So as much as we promote bottom-up approaches, they are top-down enabling instruments that can support the implementation of inclusive and sustainable decision making. And we need to be aware of those and to participate in those discussions. Next slide, please. We, um, we really believe in inclusive and transparent integrated ocean management processes at all levels. So at local decision-making levels, at national and at international and regional levels, we believe very much in transparency. And in this slide I've shown you in the middle, there's a little sort of a, a baby called the loop diagram, which showcases some of the work that we are doing in South Africa in a very small, well, Algoa Bay, it's the biggest bay in the country, but it's a small area globally. And we're piloting different approaches and ways of working with stakeholders to develop tools to make transparent decisions where they know that an impact in one industry is going to have an, an action is going to have an impact in another. Another principle is that we need coordinated engagement between business and all of our diverse ocean stakeholders. And a previous speaker also mentioned we need to start talking to business. Next slide, please. We need simple, robust, and diverse metrics of system status. So there are examples out there, the Ocean Health Index and others. Um, I particularly like Bob Costanza's work on leaving GDP behind. We can no longer rely on GDP as a metric that tells us what to do. We understand that ecosystem services actually underpin our very livelihoods. So we need to be able to report on those. Next slide, please. We need to harness technological innovation. And I think I don't need to explain that. We all understand that. Next slide, please. And this is, this is a, a, a more nuanced and tricky one. We need to acknowledge that they are power dynamics and we need to have appropriate responses to those. So when people meet at the integrated ocean management or the fisheries or the marine spatial planning table, not everybody is equal. And we somehow need to learn to have much more equal conversations so that one sector does not dominate the other. Next slide, please. We need urgent action. We've talked a lot. Now we need urgent action and we need to scale up our responses to match the scales of the problems. And here I just show a slide of some of the disasters that befall humanity and the vulnerable are the ones that get hit time and time again. So something like global um, ocean warming across the globe, you know, how do we tackle that as humanity? How do we protect the vulnerable? And particularly small island developing states are one of the geographies that I like to focus a lot of my work on. And then the final slide, please. So what, what are our next steps? Once we've refined our principles and our group has assessed the connectivity issue, we're going to test these principles for completeness and coherence by sharing them with our peers in a, through a peer review process, which is a rigorous process. Um, once our peers are happy with it, we hope to publish these initially in the academic literature, but then we're going to test them in the Western Indian Ocean where we are developing a marine spatial planning strategy for the United Nations. There are 10 nations involved, some island, some continental, 
And they, that group is going to be a very good testing group for our principles and see if they are realistic and if they can be achieved. And then finally, once our principles have been through that process, we'd like to deliver them to conversations such as the CBD's post-2020 global biodiversity framework. And then the very final slide, please, is just to say thank you very much for, for having us and for hosting this talk and this session. And if anybody's interested in our work and wants to get in touch, there are some websites for you to engage through. Thank you very much.